everyone. Welcome to a real conversation between two native English speakers. I'm Liz Wade, and this is Adam Navis. Hi, Adam. Hello, Liz. And we are going to discuss our program, Nigerian writer Chinua Achebe. And you can find that program on our website with a script that you can read along at www.spotlightenglish.com. Or you can find it on YouTube or anywhere that you get a podcast. So you can listen to it or you can watch it and follow along. And uh, yeah, so we're going to discuss that program today. Did I forget anything, Adam? Where else can you find our programs? Wherever you get your podcast, YouTube, and our website. I think you hit yeah, all okay. of them. Okay, I got them all. Yeah. You see, um, Adam, I feel like I'm a little... Um, Here's an English word that is not common, uh, discombobulated. Oh, that Real is a good stable. word. It's a fun word, but it is, you're right, <laughs> it is not a common word. No, but it means that I feel a little bit like my mind is here and, and there yeah. and um, a little bit of everywhere. A lot of different pieces, not a lot of yeah. order. Right, that don't that aren't fitting together and yes, they're not yes. jiving together. Well, that's the um, beauty of this so, being a real conversation, right? Yes, people exactly. are experiencing us uh, less put together. Uh, yes, very real. Exactly. Uh, so, are you feeling discombobulated, Adam, or are uh, you feeling? Good? Um, I am feeling. What would be? I'm trying to think of a if a word that's. Because you're, you're never, combobulated is not a word. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, I am feeling more put together um, than discombobulated. So I'm okay. And I mean that That's not in a trite way, not in a just this is the answer <laughs> I'm going to give you. But uh, right. I, I feel good. Um, I have a, a, by the, when we're recording this, I don't know when you are watching this, but it's going to be my birthday soon, so I'm feeling Oh, yeah. Good. So. Yeah. Happy early birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Adam, that is a great lead-in to what I wanted to talk about next, which is uh, YouTube memberships. Ah, so yes. If, uh, if you want to find out more about YouTube memberships and getting more out of your Spotlight English, uh, English practice, you can hit that join button right underneath the video on YouTube and learn more about what it means to become a Spotlight English member. And one of the perks, one of the cool things that you can get from Spotlight English is a uh, birthday shout out. Yeah, just like this. Cool. Happy birthday, me. So yeah. if I... Yeah, maybe I'll make you a birthday shout out. Adam. Yeah, as a, as a, as a demonstration. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. We've really and enjoyed. So while you're down there, oh, I was just saying well, to the people who are members already, we've really enjoyed um, that little community that's starting to form. Yes. Um, and so while you're down there checking out that join button, make sure that you like this video. Um, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, and then click the little bell to always get a notification. Because we are not a channel that says subscribe and gives you nothing more. We have a lot, a lot of content coming your way. Yes, that is true. Um, okay, well, let's get back to Nigerian writer Chinua Achebe. Hopefully, everyone's had a chance to listen to that program or check it out on our website. Um, I actually wrote this program, and I, I wrote it because I read the book, Things Fall Apart. So, um, obviously, Chinua Achebe is an author, a writer, and he is from Nigeria. And I think that I had read an article or read something about this book, Things Fall Apart, and I had read it a long time ago, maybe yeah. in high school or something like that. Um, and I remembered parts of it, but as I read this article and learned more, I really wanted to read it again. So I actually bought the book and mm. read it and I, I have it right here. Very nice. Um, and I was, I was looking through it. I was looking through it yesterday, you know, to refresh my memory. Um, and, uh, 
yeah, then I was thinking I should read this again. But yeah. anyway, I, I read this book um, to write this program. And uh, so the program really goes through uh, the history of Chinua Achebe and why he started writing, uh, what things influenced him. He was a pretty amazing man, honestly. Mm-hmm. I th- yeah. I- yeah, I think it was a it, it's a great program that talks about this person and their motivations for for writing which were um pretty significant. Not just oh I want to tell yes. a, I want to tell a story, but um I got really interested and excited about in the program talking about his reaction to some of the ideas and literature that was already out there about I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm using quotes Africa because Africa is and that's one of the things we can talk about right like what when people say Africa what do they even mean because it's such a big a big country so I don't I don't know if that's what was interesting to you about this this uh Chinua but um but that's that's one of the things for me that was like this is really a, an an interesting um, book and author. Yes. Well, um, the, let's talk about that incident that you that you brought up. So yeah. he saw this very it's a it's a movie, right? Or is uh, it a? It, it's no. a book and a movie. A I think. book, yes. Okay. See, I studied a lot of film in yeah. college, and so that's that's my immediate go to. But yeah, there's a book by uh, Joseph Conrad. Uh, called Heart of Darkness. Yeah. So of course we were already having uh, a very problematic title. Yes. Um, about uh, about people. I I don't know where it takes place, but it is in in the continent of Africa. And um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the script right now as I yeah. as I describe this, so I don't get it don't get it wrong. So the book was written in 1902, and it tells of a European man and his travels in parts of Africa. And in those days, many Europeans called Africa the Dark Continent. Uh, they had a very poor view of Africans, so they um, the book showed them as like not intelligent, not well spoken, yeah. and um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just read this paragraph from the program. It's it's very good, I think. Achebe tells about the longest group of words said by an African character in Heart of Darkness. The character says only eight words, and he's not very eloquent, uh, so not very well spoken or speaking nicely. The African man says, "Catch him, give him to us, eat him." Which, um, so in a book about Africa, that is the uh, longest group of words said by an African character, which is yeah. like a tragedy. And um, uh, Achebe says that like, this is not his experience of Africa at all, but this was the sort of uh, content that's going out around the world, that's popular around the world, uh, well, the Western world, right. um, which is just not representing his culture. So he started writing in um in response to that it was mm-hmm. an insult to his people right so right and of course that's something that continues to happen if not yes. just about um the country of africa or the country of nigeria it happens if you don't see um if you don't con- have a means of of telling your story whether through books or movies or podcasts or youtube if you don't have that, if you can't put that out, someone else is going to tell your story. So right. when someone outside your culture, let's just say language, right? It's very easy to say to someone watching this, oh, you don't speak good English. When I experience you, you must not be very intelligent. Well, the truth is right. the people, spotlight people are learning a second or third language. They're probably much more intelligent <laughs> than you or I are, yes. let's be honest. Um, and they're motivated and driven and ambitious. Um, yeah. But because people in Europe and people in the United States control, let's talk about movies, you know, like right. what what's being shown, how characters are getting um, portrayed, not just in a, in a book written in 1902, but right this year. Um, yeah. 
literature and, and films today. Exactly. And so I think when, when we say Africa, people say, oh, that means lions and safari. That means tribes. That means, um, uh, what else? What, what, you know, the Lion King, basically. Uh, right. <laughs> e even though the continent yeah. of Africa is, there's coastlands and there's deserts and there's jungle and there's all kinds of diversity. Yeah, it, of... it actually, um, to, to sort of emphasize how big this is, I always love seeing those maps where like other countries are laid out or oh, yeah. even other continents are laid on top of a map of Africa and it is insanely huge. Yeah. Africa yeah. covers so much land mass and so many people and so many countries. It's yeah. it's so difficult to like yeah, I mean how could you how could you ever think you were telling like the story of Africa by in one yeah. book or in one yeah. Like it's, it's, yeah, it, it, it is, but it, but we do it right. And it's problematic right. and, and it's helpful in some ways. Like if we're saying, Hey, pe we try to explain to people who might be watching this video life in the United States and we suffer the same problem, right? Yeah. We talk it's about true. life in the United States, but we're, t what we're talking about is some kind of general, usual thing that it probably isn't yeah. really accurate um yeah we, this is a, this is a funny example of this uh we have a series of short videos about the differences between uk english and us english and you should check out that playlist um but a lot of people from the us will go on there and be like we don't use this word or like yeah. i live in england and i've never heard this word well yeah Okay, yes, we cannot cover every single language difference. Like, right. especially in England, where there are like a hundred different accents in, you know, a span of six miles or whatever. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, but I think <laughs> it is important to recognize that that is something that happens and then seek out be intentional about the stories that we engage with, whether it's through books yes. or television or wherever to say, oh, I, I heard, um, you know, pick a country. Japan is this is this is what Japanese people like. Well, right. true, but we should maybe go and find a Japanese writer and maybe not just one, yes. but two or three or. Yep. Or in it, because we want that diversity. Because even one person, even uh, Achebe, isn't he? This person doesn't get to tell everyone's story. It gets right. to tell his story or or the character in this right. fiction story. So yeah. I think that's so important because we 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 want to hear the people's. We, I I do. I want to hear people's stories from the, in their own words. Yes. This um this also reminds me um of another writer uh, Chimamanda Adichie mm -hmm. who we also have a program about who talks about this as well about telling your own story and if you're not going to tell your story then who is yeah so um yeah well, well, I think well, that I think that we can we can have a challenge to yeah. our listeners like do you think you're telling your story or is there someone in your culture who you feel is yes. telling your story. Um, I would love to hear, to hear in the comments way. of this program that you let us know who, who's, who's telling the stories of your country well that, that Liz and I yes. should, should know about, that we can yes. maybe talk about. Um, put I, it in the comments. I love getting uh, book recommendations from our yeah. listeners. It's really cool. Um, again, like, you know, you're talking about uh, Spotlight listeners like... They're really engaged, yeah. like with the world, and I I love that. I love that about uh, the people who watch this channel and who listen to this podcast. Um, and I think that is one of the real strengths of this community is that we are all sort of doing this thing together, right? Like um, practicing English, but also learning about the world and um, your place in it, and how you can learn more about it and be a member of the community. Yeah. So, so I would, uh, I want to throw okay. out, I want to get the ball rolling with two authors that I like 
from, no, they're not from, they're from different cultures. So there's a Japanese uh, writer called Haruki Murakami, who okay. I really enjoy. So if you haven't read any of his books. And, I have not. And then there's a, um, I believe it's Portuguese, uh, Jose Saramago, which mm -hmm. I think won the some award in you know, Nobel Prize or something in literature. So those are, they're, they're both pretty famous writers. So a lot of you might have known about them. So I, I really enjoy them. Uh, yeah, they're doing yeah, very great. creative work and um, are outside my culture. So I enjoy that aspect of it well. So, so I'll get the ball rolling and let us know if there are writers uh, or storytellers of various kinds that you enjoy. Yeah, that's awesome. And we'll put those uh, authors and maybe a few books that you can recommend, Adam, sure. into the uh, description of this program. That would be really great. Yeah. Um, again, thank you for watching or listening, however you're taking this content in. Um, we really encourage you to become a member of the Spotlight community if you want to take your practicing and learning another step further. And you can learn more about that by clicking the join button underneath this video. You don't pay for anything until you decide to join. So just clicking join just lets you learn a little bit more and then uh, you can decide from there. Um, be sure to check out our website every Monday for a new program and that's www.spotlightenglish.com. We have a app for Android and Apple devices. So if you prefer to take that in uh, to do your English practicing that way. Uh, that's a way for you to do that. Check us out on YouTube, anywhere you get your podcasts. And uh, I think that's it. So yeah. uh, we really encourage you to listen, watch, practice, and learn. Spotlight out.